I know we've returned to the real world, but everything that happened on the Ida server somehow took place in only a few minutes of real time. The one who appeared inside the operation folder was Triage. There were two others besides Triage there. I'd like to know who on earth they were. They were attacking Ida. Does that mean that Triage isn't Ida? And also, Adelie. Welcome back to Let's Play Dot Hack GU, Volume 2. Last time, we managed to escape from the Ida server, though everything that happened there happened in... only a few minutes of real time. And as we... as we discover here, reading through the forum and the like, it wasn't actually the entire population of players playing the game that were online, but only a small portion of them. And to be honest, nobody believes them. More importantly, come the end, we saw in the coffin, Triage, Azure Kite. And to accompany him, we saw the other two descendants of Fianna, Orca and Balmung. Balmung of the Azure Sky, and Orca of the Azure Sea. We still don't know why these patched-up versions of the descendants of Fianna even exist in this world. Since Game 1, I've had a good number of people asking me, What happened to Kite? Why is he acting like this? Why is he doing this? And believe me, if you were expected to know, I'd have told you. We don't know what's going on. We don't know why they're acting that way. We don't know who they even are. Though at this point... I would very much doubt that those are the actual Kite, Orca, and Balmung players. Aside from that, we're just going to have to go deeper into this rabbit hole and see if we can't find out. Back on our desktop, we're out of the world. And we've got a couple things going for us. We have some email. Now, all the email from the previous game, I do believe, is held in... Or maybe you just have to go to the older version. Nope, they were at the bottom. Archived mail. So you can see all the emails that you got in the first game. Helps keep it a little bit simpler. Couple emails from CC Corp. One saying that the original five quests we got in the first game be it the Bounty Hunter, the Lucky Animals, the Mecha Grunny thing, all those quests are done and over. Also, the game has been upgraded in a couple ways. Now, this doesn't detail every single improvement that's been made to the engine as a whole, but these are the ones that they can actually speak about chronologically, so to say. For one, we have party cooperation. I mentioned this previously, where not just the party leader can kick chim-chims, the party members can run off and do it. Gather, to gather the team with L1, so you can press L1, and the whole team will gather together at you. Personally, it says there it works everywhere except towns. Personally, I think this is kind of useless, since if they're not, if you're not in a town, they're all kind of around you anyway. And I would really like it if they gave me L1 and R1 to rotate the camera instead, but, uh, what are you gonna do? Battles. Um, speaking about dual swords now, they did two things, one being the combo, which I mentioned previously. They say the combo has been raised from four to seven, but the number of hits has been unchanged. In other words, three of the attacks hit twice. Simple as that, really. 
charge attacks, you no longer can just hold the button and you charge up and swing. It works the same way, though. You hold... If you're standing there, you hold down the button, you'll see Haseo swing once, and then start charging. So it's kind of like getting a free attack in. So it's really improvements all around. Now the broadsword ones, I actually haven't had a chance to experiment with these any time in the past year or so, so... My guess on this one is uh, good as can be. It sounds to me like what they're doing is once you charge up the sword, you can move around. Always a plus. When charging up the sword, you can now charge it up like it looks like it means three gauges, three levels, so you can have like a third level charge. Nice charge on that one. And then the charge shockwave, charge up all the way to a shockwave. Nice stuff. Ah, and perhaps an, a, yet another one of the reasons that Game 2 is one of my favorite games in the series. Crimson VS is open. Heck yes. Now, this is kind of a fourth wall breaking email from the... From Uchi Yamada, who I want to say is one of the directors of the games. I'm not sure. But they gave you a couple presents, and they detail them here. You get 5,000 bucks, free charge. Get some free items. Um, you get three bonus movies that are unlocked. I'll go over those here in a second. And then speaking about the doppelganger's weapon. For beating the doppelganger in Volume 1, you got the Own King. And they say... You get the you can now get the Haynes Invasion by beating Doppelganger in this game, now that we have the Own King from the previous. Ah, oh, word from Adelie. Oh dear, in the real world, her hand is actually paralyzed. The doctor says it uh, seems to resemble doll syndrome. She can speak again, though, so there's at least Her that. hand is paralyzed, so the real Adderley is... There's no way a doctor can help her. The problem's got to be Ida. Once again, showing the connection between the player and character. That because her epitaph was removed, this kind of thing is happening to her in the real world. Well, before then, let's see here. We have the movie player, as mentioned. I'm not actually going to watch these, but what they do is they gave you the entire first episode of Dot Hack Roots, which is kind of neat. And then a preview for Volume 1 and 2. This is kind of a, um... It was one of those... It was one of those promo videos that they played at, uh... I don't know, let's say E3. Check out the forum while we're here. See what's going on. A lot of stuff talking about. Server problems. Now this is people, um... This is someone from the medic union actually saying how they got stuck in the server and were unable to log out. Everybody's weird now. Essentially kind of detailing what the crap just happened to us. And then, of course, everyone who wasn't on essentially calling BS and saying that it's a, an over-elaborate prank and nobody believes them. And to be honest, if someone came out and told you that, Oh yeah, I was completely trapped in an online game and I couldn't... I mean, I was inside the online game and... All the hours I spent in there happened in a couple of minutes. Would you believe them? Crimson versus. We got a guy just talking about how it's back. Nice to know. I'm um, talking a little bit just about what's going on. I'll cover that shortly. Let's see here how I play game. And then someone explaining how you play game. Again, I'll detail all this shortly. And then finally, um, how I play game part two. Uh, same stuff. News! System troubles. Again, kind of the same thing. People questioning 
If there's this much trouble going on, just how uh, reliable is CC Corp? And again, still people kind of saying, I don't buy it that they got sucked into the game. So, yeah. Rumors! Ah, the Lost Ground Mega Thread. Let's see here. We have Hidden Forbidden Holy Ground, the Holgrans Cathedral, which we were at previously. The Arhe Keln Waterfall. We haven't actually been there yet. We saw it in the beginning of Volume 1, but we haven't been back. We haven't got the keyword for it. See, there's the Morig Barrow Wall. And then, um, dee -dee -dee, the Isle of Kings, which is the Arena Emperor thing. We went to that when we uh, won the thing. That's where the party was. No keyword for that, though. And good ol' Opkalu. Because it's Opkalu and awesome, and you can see stuff. Asta and EO10. My partner is gone. Now, as adorable as that is, he's actually talking about breaking his HMD, so... Pi. Got a little bit of a fan club uh, forming about uh, Pi here. Shinobi. Shinobi. Whatever. Assassin. Let's see here, more people saying that, um, Pi is awesome. And you know what? I gotta agree, Pi is kinda awesome. And then someone, after as much talking about Pi, someone eventually comes along and says, there's all these people talking about Pi, but one person that I really like? Adelaide. Looking all lonely and whatnot, wanna help cheer her up. And you know what? Adelaide's awesome too. Cool dude. Or cool lady dude. Do debt, so to say. Found moon tree. Wrong button. Colored pencil. I don't recall, uh. I don't recall his glasses being quite that big. There we go. Okay, now, um, on the left, then, is Shino. Though that's before she changed her outfit, which I didn't know, but apparently you can change your outfit colors whenever you darn well feel like it. Um, halfway through Dot Hack Roots, she changed from white to black. The freaking, uh, the crap is this thing called? The ho it's like a holy, holy eater? Something of the sort? Chim Chims! I don't know what to think about that one. Reminds me of the, um... Reminds me of the art style of whoever the guy is that did Galaxy Express 3-9. The Chim God! Who apparently loves himself some barbecue. Anything else in here? Yes, there is! Chim Candy. Good ol' Opkalu. Let's see, what else do we have here? We have some movies. Those are the same three movies that I just saw, right? Yeah. Got the new wallpapers that went in there. Got some new news. Mass Hallucinations, which is kind of what they're chalking that up to be. Crimson VS back online. Something about Salvador Ihata being Salvador Ihata. Thought involved gameplay. The desert will save us. Solar power. Regenerated organ transplant. Ooh! So that's like where they like develop the organ ex externally based on the person's DNA or something, and then transplant it. Which is actually something we've been working on in the real world. It's kind of neat, neat stuff. I'm um, talking about the people up there in space. Dull Syndrome Symposium, so it's become a big enough thing even in Germany. ULC, now by um, Unsubstantiated Liability Company. What this is, is um, companies that don't actually have 
like a building or whatnot. It's run entirely by people living at home doing the work online. Doll syndrome, syndrome spreading across the world. Good and the bad of MMO, MMOs? CG tours. Hmm. And what do we have in here? We have... Looks like just the new online Jack. We're gonna have to watch that one. Okay, and all this brings us to Crimson Versus. Crimson Versus! Heck yeah. Now let's see here. First thing we'll want to do is look at what uh, cards we have to make our decks. Now gallery lets us just look through all of them. We can do a practice battle with the decks we've put together. Deck edit then shows us they've given us three default decks. Now let's see here. I tend to move off the center one because at the beginning of the game the um these card types really aren't going to be the best in the world. Now, how the game works is you have a general, and you have three units supporting that one general. Now, the generals, we see, as you see off to the right, it says Trinity Assault. This one down here is Trinity Snipe. There's also a Trinity Shield. There are three types, and they work kind of on a rock-paper-scissors kind of thing. Where Snipe beats Assault, Assault beats Shield, Shield beats Snipe. Now, the world as a whole, people tend to work with, um... What's the word I'm looking for? Trends? And at the beginning of the game, the trend tends to be people making Snipe decks. So if we make an assault deck, we're going to get the crap kicked out of us. So let's go with the snipe deck. And we have our general here. Let me uh, talk a little bit about this here. We have... Can I, like, just look at the card real nice and big? Can I... Oh, enlarge. There we are. Now you see in the lower left corner, it's AP2. In the lower right, HP18. And in the upper left, you see the red gunblade-looking thing. Or I think they call them... Do they call them bayonets in this game? I don't remember. But um, that means it's snipe, and then we have a 9 next to that. Now, HP is obviously... Well, HP, it's how much of a beating you can take. AP is your attack, how much damage you can do per turn. And the number in the upper left is... What do they call it? Charisma. Charisma being how much you can mold out of the units you have. Like these has a 3 in the upper left corner. So this is a 3, a 2, and a 1, so that totals up to 6. We can have a maximum of your general's charisma. Let's see here, it adds 2 AP to your general. How it works is um, the units will generally boost up your general. And then your general and your opponent's general will beat it out until uh, somebody wins. So adds 2 AP to your general, adds 1 AP to your general, and reduces 1 HP at the beginning of each of your turns. Now, since your AP will continuously build with this, it'll go 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is actually much better than you'd think. And then just a simple adds 1 AP to your general. Now, you do want the cost in the upper left corner of the cards. Here is just one. You kind of want that to be as high as you can get, so the card is actually of use. Now, let's see here. We'll certainly want to pick something higher than a cost of one, or that card will never get to work. So let's go with that one. Adds two AP to the end of each of your turns when your general goes first. Now, we can't guarantee we're going to go first, first, so we should probably pick a card that lets us, well, go first. And in this case, there is an assault type, cost of two, that makes you go first. 
Now since that is an assault type and not a snipe type, we're at a, at, we're at a little bit of a disadvantage. People will, let's see here, occasionally replace the second and third ones with snipe, or with assault. So as long as that's in the second or third, we're a little bit better off than putting it in the first. And people will occasionally replace the first and the second with da 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 shield types. And we would have an advantage over shield. So we're actually best off with this one being in the second area in that regard. Then we have the this one and that one. This is a higher cost, so we'll want to put this one where we have the least advantage otherwise. Which, um, this is occasionally going to be a an assault, which we have an advantage over. This will occasionally be a shield, which we'll have a disadvantage to. So I think we're actually set here. Now to show you how the game works, let's hold a practice battle. Against our two two of our decks. Let's pick this one, and let's say... Oh, I don't know, deck one. <laughs> 